welcome to another great episode right here on IT Pro TV. I'm your host, Ronnie Wong, and today we're going to continue on in our ICND 1 content. Now, remember that what we're doing is we're getting ready for that exam, and what we have in our studio today, of course, is Mr. Cisco himself, Todd <laughs> Lamley. Thank you for joining us today. Maybe a little C, Cisco. Eh? Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Let's have some fun. We were doing some routing stuff. Remember, this is a routing and switching course. Ronnie's got that down for pen. <laughs> we're a routing and switching course. So what part are we in now? Switching. Switching. So we're going to do two sections in switching. So we're going to just look at layer two switching, port security, huge objective there, uh, and then inter, uh, VLANs and inner VLAN routing, right? And layer three switching, which is kind of cool. All right, let's go ahead and take a look by just taking out some, like taking a look at some basic layer two switching technologies. All right, so the catalyst switches, um, if a post test completes, uh, we're gonna look at this right here. Here's my system light right here, if you can see that. There's a system light right there, and this is going to be amber while it boots and runs through the post test. It takes a minute or so, and it's gonna come up. Now, if it stays amber and doesn't turn green, that indicates a problem with the post or something else, and it's typically fatal, right? We typically have to throw the switch away. Now, that's kind of important on here. I think that was part of the objectives at one time or something typically fatal, but in this case here, I want you to just understand, if these are gig ports, this would start at gigabit zero slash one, not gigabit zero slash zero, all right? So we start at one, and another default here is that all ports are enabled by default. So just to recap from day one here, hubs are just a multi-port repeater. If this guy sends a digital signal, this is sent here and then sent out every other port, the digital signal. We don't segment the network, it's not a segmentation device at all. All ports in the same collision domain, only runs half duplex, all ports in the same broadcast domain. Now switches, uh, and Cisco calls this what? Right here. Cisco calls this, when we do switching micro segmentation, we're, we're segmenting the network in a micro scale because every single host has a, uh, a switch port, which first off means we can run full duplex, media rate adaption, meaning that if I had a 10 megabit host, it could talk to a host running 10 megabit half duplex, it could talk to a host running gigabit at full duplex. That's a very cool technology right there. All right, so notice I have straight through cable here, part of the uh, CCNA objectives, no auto detect mechanisms. Each segment is its own collision domain, meaning it can run its uh, full duplex, but here, this is an icon, another icon for a hub, which means this guy's only gonna run half duplex. We'll take a look at some statistics again, because it's so important, but from the first day we looked at statistics and showed us what happens if we have a duplex issue, right? And so we, can, we need to be able to verify that and be able to pick that out. Switches supersede uh, bridges, okay? So uh, we can see that they're, it's a bridging technology, and uh, the reason that Cisco, you're gonna see those terms interchangeably. You have bridges and switches, and especially next week when you get into spanning tree, right? They, we only use the term bridging for the most part in there, root bridges and so on. But anyways, uh, let's take a look at layer two switch, right? Uh, it's, it's faster than a bridge for a couple of reasons. We have four, more port density, much, much faster. And they use ASICs. Now the ASICs do bridging functions and we'll find out what those are in the next couple slides. It operates at layer two of the OSI model. We only read the MAC addresses and that's how we filter and segment the network. The bridging functions here, forward filter and flood frames by building something called a CAM table. Uh, we call it a MAC address table because that's the command to see that CAM table show MAC address table. That gives me a MAC address to port mapping, right? And we have many ports, more than a bridge. And now here's the most important thing down here. Bridges and switches learn MAC addresses when, so here a device comes in, we're going to read the source MAC address. Every time a frame comes in, the very first thing that's done is we read the source MAC address and make sure it's in the CAM table. If not, we're gonna put it in there. So every time a frame comes in, the very first thing that happens is reading the source MAC address every time. Then we run a, you know, we run a CRC first. We didn't used to do that actually. We ran some different LAN switching methods, cut through fragment free. We only run stored forward now, which means we're gonna run a CRC on every frame that comes in. Then we're gonna read the source MAC address. Why the CRC first? Because if a fragmentation occurs, we're not gonna be able to get the right MAC address.